Hey guys, what is going on? It is your good buddy Sam, and it is time for another very exciting, the first tutorial of 2013. This is a momentous occasion, and we're going to celebrate it together by learning how to do... I feel, I feel like 2013 is going to be a year of brightness and of light and of... Um, efficient GPU processing, and that's why today I'm going to show you how to use um, the new gen features in Max uh, Jitter to do bloom lighting. Um, so you will need Max 6 and Gen to do this tutorial. Well, to do this tutorial, you can still do this effect in Max. In fact, you could probably do it in Max 4, but I digress. Let's focus. Um, so what is bloom lighting? Bloom lighting is this effect. I'm sure you've seen this many times before. Basically, you have something bright in the background, and bloom lighting simulates this kind of effect where if you're in a very dark room, maybe, and you're looking outside through a bright window, or uh, through a window at a bright scene, the scene sort of blurs, and you have this halo around the door or the window or the whatever um, that makes that, uh, from the brightness, kind of bleeding into the interior of the room. So this is without bloom lighting turned on, and of course over here this is with bloom lighting turned on and made pretty extreme, and you can see the light is obscuring or blurring into the um, frame of the window, and doing all that stuff. So it's actually a pretty cheesy technique and overdone a lot these days, but learning how to do it in Max is not only easy, uh, but also it looks kind of cool, and um, it's a good stepping stone to doing a lot of other cool effects, and you can, it really opens up a lot of possibilities because um, it combines masking and texture mapping and all kinds of other cool stuff. So let's let's just dive right in. And um, so here's a quick batch that's gonna demonstrate what we do, um, what we're gonna do. So here you can see this is my um, bloom lighting patch. This is what the finished patch is gonna look like. Um, so here's the, uh, here's the effect without bloom lighting, or rather here's the video without bloom lighting. Here's with bloom lighting turned on. You can see the background is made kind of crazy intense, and the blur is, um, you know, obscuring this guy's this this very handsome young man's clothing and all this stuff. Um, so the basic way that we're going to go about doing this technique, and I, I strongly recommend when you're doing stuff like this, that's um, coming off the that where you're doing your rendering on the GPU using JITGL picks and doing other OpenGL operations and stuff like that, that you have a clear idea of what it is you're trying to accomplish. I guess it's sort of contrary actually to how I like to program in Max, which is just to do things until they work or do things until they don't work and then the things that they that don't work end up being much cooler than you know the thing that was originally intended. But anyway, if you want to achieve this effect, it helps to have a clear idea of what it is that you want to do from the beginning. So the first thing that we want to do is take the original video, and that's done. Awesome. So far, 100% A+. Step two is separate out from the image the parts that are of a given brightness. Um, and as you can see here, this image, uh, his shorts, which are dark, and his legs, which are dark, or at least darker than the background, are being cut out of this image. And then we're going to take that and we're going to blur the bright part and then add it back to the original. So you can see here's the original, and then you take this blurred uh, image of the bright parts and then add it back, and that's how you get this bloom effect. So that, my friends, is what we're going to do. Um, so let's get right down to it. Uh, I'm going to close this patch, or rather just minimize it. And this window is just going to keep doing its thing, so we'll just, I don't know, put that down here and move on with our lives. This is a bug, that's awesome. Put that over here. Let's make a new patch. So, first thing that we're going to need in our brave new patch is we're, of course, going to need a jit.window. And this window is going to be where we um, ultimately render our image to, and also we need some kind of window or P window or matrix to be our graphics context um, in order to use the OpenGL functionality um, that we're going to want to call on to, to, to do all this processing. Um, so anyway, we're going to call our window Bloom2 because I already named the other window Bloom. And that won't work to have them both name the same thing. And I like to throw in at floating floating one because I like having the window up on top while I patch, uh, better than having to keep bringing it back into focus. And then, of course, to do our actual rendering, we're just going to do the usual stuff. So we'll make a toggle uh, to turn on and off our metro, make a Q metro. And a, as always with Q metro, it's a deferred bang, so it doesn't actually matter how fast it is. Uh, setting it to 5 milliseconds basically means render a frame as often as you can. A trigger object with bang bang and erase. And finally a JIT GL render object. GL.render 
uh, and give it the argument bloom two. And this way, you know that um, that's how you tell this JGL render to render to um, render to this window. I'm actually going to go ahead and jump to that other patch super quick and turn off the rendering in this uh, <laughs> patch because otherwise it's just wasting a lot of frames and that's kind of pointless. Um, so anyway, let's just minimize that again. Sorry about that. So anyway, back to the good stuff. Um, oh no, Bloom 2 we want. You stay here, Bloom 2. So what we're going to do first, let's tick this toggle, make sure everything's working. This just, you probably can't tell, but this window turned a, a incredibly subtle shade of gray, which means that our OpenGL rendering is actually happening. I hook the erase up to the GL render and the bang up to the JIT GL render, which means that as often as Max can do it, it's going to erase the context of this window and then bang. So first thing we want to do is get our test video into play. The way I like to do that, I think there's a clipping... Um, uh, Paste, no, God, where is clipping? Uh, new from templates, I think it's, oh no, you right click, paste from, and there should be one called demo video, but of course it's not there. Awesome, that's exactly what I wanted. All right, well what you can do always is, what I do is open up jit.gl, uh, gl.texture, and if you open up the help file for JITGL texture, there's this thing right here, um, this awesome little demo video thing. I just copy pasted that from the help file, and this just gives you a video, and it gives you all the um, pre-programmed Max videos, so you can play those. Um, super helpful when you're trying to just kind of simulate, an, uh, or you just need some video to play with, you don't have a lot on, on hand. And uh, so you guys should have these same videos. Anyway, I'm gonna use this garbage file here, because that's, what I, that's just how I feel right now, man. I just feel like garbage. Um, so we're going to use this file. I got, I got dark. All right, anyway, so now that we have our test video, the first thing that we want to do is separate out only the bright parts of this video. This is actually going to be the hardest part of, um, most involved part anyway, of this whole tutorial. So what we're going to do is um, basically go into this uh, frame of video and calculate for each pixel in the video. Um, I just want to save this really quick, sorry. Uh, let's save it in documents. Oh no, I just recently restructured my entire hard drive situation. So let's save it in max six documents. I'm gonna call mine Bloom. Good, now it's saved. So uh, what we want to do is go into this video and for each pixel calculate its luminance value. Luminance is a measure of how bright that pixel is. Um, and what we're going to do is filter for only pixels that are within a certain range of luminance. So if, say, we were targeting luminance 0 0.6, and luminance values are going to be between 0 and 1, um, we're going to say, okay, take only the pixels whose luminance is uh, 0.6, plus or minus some range, and with a certain amount of feathering on either side, and then only pass through those pixels and set the alpha, which is to say the transparency of all the other pixels in the image, uh, to 0. So hopefully that will make sense, and I'll show you how we're going to do that um, basically right now. So we're going to make a new jit.gl.pix object and give it the argument bloom, uh, or balm, no, bloom, oh my god, bloom2. Sorry, it's late, and uh, I've been hitting the sauce, if we are to be honest. So anyway, um, and this jit.gl.pix object, the bloom2 here just means use uh, this, uh, where is it, this window as the graphics context uh, for doing all the operations on this matrix. Um, so that just means, uh, so the graphics context, things like textures, which are just images, and um, various uh, state parameters, and things that we don't necessarily need to worry about for this tutorial, but it just means that they are, they, it, they have a, the context is this window. So they're all in the context of this window. They belong to this window, but it's not so important for this tutorial. Um, anyway, so you open up this JITGL PIX window, and it's the boilerplate max stuff, just taking the left matrix, adding it to the, or more exactly, the left pixel, because JITGL PIX operates on um, the incoming matrix one pixel at a time. So it's just taking the incoming pixel, adding it to the pixel of the right matrix, which doesn't exist, and then outputting the result. So we don't want that. That's not what we're doing in this tutorial. Um, instead, first thing we're going to do is take the in. In here is just the incoming pixel. And we're going to calculate the luminance value. So what is luminance anyway? Um, luminance is just a measure of brightness. 
And it's actually how you convert, and one way to convert an image from um, RGB to grayscale is to, for each pixel, calculate a brightness for that pixel. That's a function of red, green, and blue. And the way to do that in the context of luminance is just with a linear mapping. And what that means is you take the red, multiply it by some value, the green, multiply it by some value, and the blue, multiply that by some other value, add those together, and that gives you your luminance. And values that I found that work um, happen to be going to make a new vec here for a vector. Uh, for red, 0 0.2126. For green, 0 0.7152. And for blue, 0 0.0722. Um, these values actually basically just come from the human eye, man. Like, to us, green looks super bright and blue doesn't look that bright. That's just how it is. You want to change that? You got to change fucking human beings, man. There's no changing human nature or something. Um, sorry, that was dumb. Anyway, so what we're going to do is take the incoming pixel value and take the dot product of um, this vector with the incoming pixel value. And that's just going to be... Um, dot product is just uh, take the red, multiply it by this, blue, multiply it by the second value, and the green, multiply it by the third value. Um, you know what? Actually, we should do this. We should do swizz uh, R RGB because the values that come in are actually going to be red, green, blue, and alpha values for each pixel. We want to ignore alpha. Um, and swizz RGB gives us a new vector using the red excuse me, green and blue components of the incoming color. So that's in there, we take the dot product, we can for now just output that and see what it looks like. And um, if we make a new jit.p window, I'll make it a little bit bigger, we can see the result of that should be, well, it's nothing of course, why is it nothing? Param, no such object. Well, what does that mean? All right, all right, let's get to the bottom of this. Swizz vec, hmm, is this just not working because it's screwed up, or what's going on? Oh, I probably need to turn this metronome, there we go, okay. So, one more time, let's hook this up to this, close this. Yeah, cool, and you can see it's a grayscale image, basically. It's just the brightness of each pixel. So, awesome, so far we are rocking it. Um, now what we want to do is, so let me explain a little bit what we're going to do by jumping over to this other piece of patch that I have over here. So what we're gonna do is pick a target luminance value, and then we're only gonna accept pixels in some range of that luminance value. So as you can see here, I've got a luminance that I'm targeting with this slider here. And then down here, what we're gonna do is just take that target luminance and subtract the other luminance, um, its distance from that target value. So down here in this little region here, you can see this matrix is coming up black because values here are very near to this luminance value. So the distance is very small, so that value is small. So the color, small color equals black. That was like the most convoluted possible way to explain what is actually a very simple concept. But in any case, we're gonna take the, the value that is the distance from the target luminance, and then we're going to apply what's called the smooth step function to get this value here. And then we're gonna multiply that by the uh, input to get this final result down here. Now, smooth step is a function um, that's used all the time in graphics programming, and what it does is basically lets you um, uh, define a high and low value, and if you give it an input that's higher than the high value, you get one. You give it an input that's lower than the low value, you get zero. And everywhere in the middle, you get a smooth transition from the one to the other. And I'll show you what that looks like. And you can see here, if we increase the tolerance, we're highlighting a wider band of luminance. And if we increase the smoothing, we're adding more and more feathering um, on either side of the uh, target luminance. If I jump over to Grapha really quick, this is what the smooth step function looks like. Um, so you can see here, if I pick a low value that's around here, you have to imagine that the uh, x-axis here is how far away the luminance we're interested in is from our target luminance. So here on the y-axis, this would be a value of zero distance from the target luminance, so exactly what we're looking for. And as you can see, we're going to multiply all those pixel values by, by one. Way over here are pixel values whose luminance is nowhere near what we're looking for, and we're going to multiply those by zero. And in the middle, the smooth step function is going to give us this lovely transition, smooth transition from one to the other, and that we can actually decide you know, to our liking, as our, as our whim dictates, 
uh, just how near or far we want uh, to allow that, or how much smoothing we want to apply uh, as we move away from our target value. So with all that in mind, let's get back into how to actually make that happen. Um, so we've got our luminance value already calculated over here. And what we're going to do is add a smooth step, smooth step object, expecting on the left here our high value. Um, so we're going to make a new param, param um, target, give that a value of 0 0.6, uh, this is the default value, we can always change it later, and param smoothing, uh, smoothing, give that a value of 0 0.1. As small, actually both of these, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, uh, not target, tolerance. Tolerance, and give it a value of 0 0.05, and the smoothing a value of 0 0.05 as well. Um, we're gonna add those two together to get the, um, you know, I actually want tolerance to be on the right. <laughs> it's gonna be cleaner, trust me. Um, so we're gonna add those two together to get the high value and take just the tolerance as our low value and use those as the bounds of our smooth step function. So we're going to say up until um, the luminance is, uh, luminance value is, as long as the luminance value is less than tolerance um, away from our target luminance, give us a one. As soon as it gets to be greater than tolerance, start to feather off at a slope defined by smoothing, and then once the luminance is greater than tolerance plus smoothing, well then forget it, just give us a zero. Um, so we do now uh, add another param, uh, target, and we're going to make this 0 0.6, abs, diff, come on, you can do it. and then plug that in to be the value that we sample for our smooth step function. So smooth step goes low, high, and then sample. Uh, we're feeding our parameters in the order high, low sample um, because we want values close to zero to be one and values farther from, uh, from zero to give us a zero, which is the inverse of how smooth step usually works. Just uh, read the documentation, but for now, just trust me that that's how smooth step works. Um, anyway, so that's uh, it. That's how we're going to calculate our smoothness. And then we're just going to do mix here, uh, linear crossfade of inputs. Uh, the input on the left, for values close to 0, we're going to take a vector of all zeros, 0 point, 0 point, 0 point, 0 point. So just black alpha, which is the name of my metal band, black alpha. It's kind of a stupid name. I take it back. I would never name my band black alpha. Um, sounds offensive. Um, and feed this smooth step function here to the right. This is going to be the interpolation factor. Um, so we're going to interpolate between the input matrix, so the actual color that we get in, and this value of black alpha. And the mixed, uh, wow. So anyway, out of smooth step is going to come uh, for values that are close to our target luminance, uh, values close to 1. For values far away from our target luminance, values close to 0. We're passing that down into this mix object. Mix is going to mix between this black alpha and the pixel value that we're given. So say for example we're given green, and green is very close to our target alpha, or our target luminance. The result of smooth step is going to be a 1. Mix is going to have a 1 in its right input, so it's going to sample mostly from the input green that it's given and output green. For say black or blue or something further from our target luminance, smooth step is going to output something closer to zero. We're going to sample from our black alpha value and that value is going to be removed essentially, that pixel is going to be removed from the final image. This all looks pretty good to me, um, so I'm going to close this hook this back up here and see if we get anything useful. And yeah, you can see, totally. So um, brightnesses within a certain range are being filtered out of the image that we were given. Awesome, so we are just, we are, we are crushing this. It's unbelievable. I did not know that we were gonna do this good a job, viewer, but we are doing an amazing job. Let's make a couple sliders really quick. H slider, or just slider. Oh God, I cannot type slider and hop into the inspector. I want this to be float with a range of one. Awesome. And then um, 
message param uh, tar target uh, hook this up to this guy yes just like that make you a little bit shorter come on work with me oh come where's that magic square come on come on just there we go uh, let's duplicate this whole thing a couple times oops and call this one tolerance and this one smoothing cool hook up smoothing here and tolerance here and you can see how as we um, if we make the target very close to zero we're just fill oh, it's really hard to see but we're actually just filtering out the dark colors um, as we increase the tolerance, we bring in more and more of the image. As we increase the smoothing, we also bring in more and more of the image, but more smoothly. Um, and we can move up and down from bright colors to dark colors. Um, so that's that's what we're doing. So let's just work on the, the this is, looks like it's just picking out the bright colors. So let's work with that for now. Next thing we want to do is um, actually uh, blur those values. So to do that, we're going to use um, a jit.gl.slab object. Um, jit.gl, there's an object built into Max called jit.gl.slab.gauss6x. Um, this is just a six uh, pass, or I don't know, it's a big, um, it is a, uh, as you can see, it's a patcher file that applies this um, Gaussian blur to the image uh, six times. So it applies the, a blur to the image over and over again to ultimately give you something quite blurry. We actually need to pass in here the name of the OpenGL context, which is Bloom2. So that's going to blur our image now. Um, and let me see, how do you change the... Okay, so in its right inlet here, it's expecting the amount that you want to blur it. And I'm going to say that I want to blur it by a factor of, I don't know, three. And if we throw this onto this P window, you can see, sweet, there is um, just the bright values of the image, uh, but super blurred. So that's really cool. Um, last thing we need to do is add the um, input matrix to this blurry matrix that we made. We're going to use a jit.gl.pix. Sorry for wasting your time. Object uh, bloom2. And what we want to do is just take the um, this blurry matrix and we're going to, um, everywhere that image is, uh, we're gonna multiply the pixel values by the alpha coming in, and then add those to the raw matrix on the right. So we swizz um, RGB, RGB, to get the red, green, and blue values from the blurry matrix, as well as the alpha. We multiply those together, And then add those uh, Swizz RGB and A from the left as well. And we can add the RGB values to these values. We're going to need to make a vector from the red, green, blue, and alpha values. Uh, we're going to need to Swizz out red, green, and blue from what we just added together. Swizz, P, that's, there's no such color as P. Red, green, purple, I don't think so. Um, grab the red, green, and blue values. Mix all this junk together. And pass that through. Simple as that. Um, and the result of this ought to be our um, final, that's it, look at that man, we got the, I can't believe it, but check that shit out, we got the, uh... <laughs> I should sound less surprised that we actually managed to do it, but there you go, that's the, um, uh, what do you call it, bloom lighting right there. Uh, so just one final thing that we probably want to do is actually see this in this window so that we can full screen it and check it out. 
Um, and as you, as you, I'm sure, are used to doing at this point, there's a really quick way to use the escape key to toggle your JIT window, uh, the full screen on your JIT window. You make a key object, key, not kink. There's a kink tilde object? I'll have, to, I'll have to investigate that one later in my private time. Um, cell 27, me and kink tilde, I can't believe it. Um, throw in a toggle message floating dollar sign one. Oops, wow, oh my god, no, that's not what I wanted. Hook this up to this and this up to this. Now we can make that window huge, which is great because there's nothing in it. Um, and finally, wait, where's Bloom 2? Okay. Oh, crap, I didn't want floating. I want a full screen. Okay, so I guess the other... I should close this other project now. Uh, this guy should... Come on. This guy I should close. Cool. So now we can make this window float. That's great. Um, and finally, the uh, last thing that we want to do um, is we're going to add a jit.gl.video plane. Video plane is just a plane in your OpenGL context that will let you display a texture. I'm going to give it the parameter value um, transform reset zero. Or rather, sorry, transform reset two which means uh, don't apply any model, don't pretend like this plane is just at some weird place in space, it means just display it right in the front of the, um, right in the front of the graphics context. And I'm going to apply the texture from this, this, this final result here, um, and apply it as a texture to the video plane, just by connecting this like this. And that right there, my friends, is why Max is fucking awesome, because that's applying a texture, just making a patch cord. So awesome. And now if we make this thing full screen, right there. Look at that beautiful foggy bloom lighting peering in from the sides there. So anyway, there's your bloom lighting. Uh, you could go back and multiply this matrix to make that more intense, The um, to make the blooming more intense. Um, you can go back and you can um, change the size of this blur kernel. So here's a um, very tight blur kernel. It's not that blurry at all. Make the blur curl really big, and then you can see this bloom is um, really starting to work its way into the rest of the image. Uh, you can s look for a different... Um, this is actually blurring the interior, the stuff that's dark rather than the stuff that's light, which looks a little weird. Um, but this general technique of keying out the um, values of a certain luminance or even of a certain color and then performing an effect just on those is a, a super powerful technique. And there's a ton of stuff that you can do with it. And bloom lighting is really just the start, but uh, hey, it's a pretty cool start. So um, there you go. I hope that was an exciting foray to the world of bloom lighting, and I hope you learned a lot. And uh, awesome to see you guys in 2013, and I hope we have many more opportunities to do some fantastic patching together. Uh, stay safe and... Um, <laughs> don't. Don't know why I said. Stay safe and watch out for watch out for kink tilde. It's a um, that object will lead you into some some fun times, but also some dark times. Just um, as always, in Max, have a good safe word, and I will see you next time.